Hello, I'm Shane of Sweden and welcome back to our series of videos on how to build an intrusion detection system with Visual Studio and C Sharp. Uh, and as always in the videos in the series, you will find in the notes below a link to the source code as I am using it here at this stage of the game. And so if you want to download it and code along by yourself while watching this video, please feel free. Now if we look at the unit tests we created in the last video, we can see that we have some issues here. We have some things we perhaps need to refactor. For example, we are processing our network data via a method call here we call process next message. Uh, this is, is this really what we want a sensor to do? Not really, we want a sensor to run continuously and autonomously processing network data that arrives and when it detects something according to the rules, it declares an alert and we're not we're not in any way near that yet the other thing is of course is I noticed that our sensor class here it doesn't actually even implement our sensor I sensor interface and we have methods such as process next message which are not in our I sensor interface and we, in our I sensor interface we have a property here information source that our sensor doesn't actually use so we can see there's quite a bit of refactoring to be done and we're building up quite a lot of classes here so it's possible that we really should start moving some of these interfaces and classes to their own files to clean up the whole thing. So let's get started. Okay so let's start this with a bit of cleaning up first. So we are going to implement iSensor in our sensor class. That means we need to implement the missing members. We're not going to do anything with those that member just yet, so we can leave it as not implemented exception. Okay, so we start moving some files and cleaning up the process a little here. So if we go to our main class, we can add a new folder where we are going to add uh, interfaces. And from this iSensor interface, we can move to a file. Just move that to our interface catalog. And if you go back to our sensor tests, we also have I network information source. So let's do the same thing there. Let's move to a file. Move that to our interfaces catalog. And delete. Uh, now we need a reference here to our project we don't have. And our interfaces are back. And the sensor class, this we should also take out and move to our sensors. A simple information source that also should be moved. And our simple information source that we can actually just keep as a class in the test project because it, this is a class we probably only will use for test purposes. So, as you can see, uh, we've now cleaned up our project a bit. And so, we just have our three tests. Okay, if we look at our sensor class here, what does it do when it posts a message? It gets the information, it checks the information against a rule, and if it matches the rule, then it generates an alert, and if it doesn't match the rule, then it doesn't generate an alert. The problem here is that our rule here is hard-coded, so if we want to change the rules, then we actually need to go in and change the code. And this breaks the open-close principle, so the class should be available for open for extension, but not for modification. So we really need to fix this right away. It's a fundamental flaw in our design and we'll do that of course through a test. And if we copy our last test, uh, we can change the data here and see how our system handles the new rule. 
now we're going to look at some some semi real data here so we're going to take an example of some network traffic involving an FTP server that would normally be something that we might want to keep an eye on for example when somebody's trying to log in as admin then we probably would want to get an alert so what does that sort of data look like well this tool is Wireshark it's used for network analysis and troubleshooting and also incident analysis in a sort of forensic sense and here we have a capture file from a network and if we just add a filter on to it so we want to look at the FTP data uh, here we can see somebody's trying to access our FTP account as an admin user there so we can see the command user admin so this is a typical FTP type activity that we might want to trace so if we just take that user admin and change our message then we won't see an alert created okay, so and if we just refresh our tests build our solution and there should have gotten alerts but we didn't the reason being that this is not going to trigger alerts with our existing code so what we need to do is to extract our rules and, and separate them somehow from the code of process next message so that the rule processing definition of rules that we use are independent from the code of the sensor class now there are several patterns available that are standard for this type of activity we could use the command class pattern where we send the actual commands we're going to carry out on the network data we could even perhaps use the strategy pattern where we is insert the rule set we're looking for but since it is actually rules there is a rules pattern and we should probably try to use that since it seems to be the most adapted for our particular needs okay so this is the uh, this actually is the rule that we want to enforce and we need some way to make the system more flexible so that we can add these rules to our class. So for example, we can match against user admin. In our constructor, we can actually add a rule. So if we create a new interface here, say we can call it uh, I rule. And we create this interface. We can keep the interface in the test class for the moment. Now the interface now the interface will have one simple method here at the moment, which is checking the match for our rule. Just as we did before. So we have we pass the text to the method, the network data message. And if it matches our rule, then we the rule we've created then returns a, a true and an alert would be created and the sensor stores this rule which is used in its constructor okay now instead of this manual match we can actually just call the uh, check method on the rule that we've created so we just return rule.match method and this will work for all the rules not just uh, one specific text. So you can see the method looks immediately much cleaner. We now have to fix our tests, of course, since they have two constructor parameters. And we need to add a real rule, an uh, instance of the uh, iRule interface. So we'll create quickly a rule class here, which implements the iRule interface. And we have to, of course, implement the interface method, which is match. And here we can check against our message and see if the message matches the text that we created our rule with. So we pass that text that we create our rule with via the constructor.
we store that as a private read only. We're just going to do a simple match here if the text contains our matching pattern. And we just have to return whether or not there is a match. And we can move these uh, classes, the simple rule class and the interface class to their own files. Do the same for the interface. Okay, and now we have to fix our tests since we have uh, two parameters. But we don't need a real matching pattern here for this test because we're not actually doing any match. You can just send in a, a null object. It should work fine. For this unit test, of course, we do actually need a real rule method, a real rule that we'll send in when we construct our sensor. So we create a new simple rule, and the text, of course, is hacking attempt. And we pass that rule to our evaluator, which is the sensor itself. And for this test, we can create a simple FTP rule, which will have a slightly different pattern match. And we can pass this FTP rule again when we construct our sensor. Now we can run our selected tests and we get a green result for all four. So now our tests work for both the FTP type rule and for our simple rule before. And notice now we are using the rule pattern so that we don't have to change the code for our sensor every time we want to change the type of network traffic data event it's going to match against. So we've got a much more flexible sensor package that we can configure as we need it. And I think that's probably a good point to stop the video. And uh, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next part.